Good day everyone, uh, it's David here, Art of Shop. Now there's, um, there's not a lot of movies out there that really features engineers or engineering as the main character, um, let alone talking about antennas or RF engineering. So there's one movie that came out in 2000, happens to be an Australian movie as well, The Dish. Um, it's a great movie, I, I watched it when I was still a student studying antennas and so forth and um, it's quite entertaining and it's worth watching. But that's not why I'm actually um, sitting here talking about a movie. Um, the thing is the dish itself, the concept of a dish is really what I want to talk about today. And um, not just today, but in this, this um, alternative series, which is Art of Antennas, um, as opposed to the um, Black, Pro Black Spot project. So the Black Spot project is specifically for solving 4G and Wi-Fi major trouble problems but um, I also want to have a bit of um, you know, technical stuff and, and have some fun with antennas as well so whilst it's a serious topic um, I also just want to spend some time on, on playing with antennas and just trying to get better a better understanding or show you a better understanding of some of the antennas themselves so what I want to do is just spend some time on the parabolic dish or parabola as, um, as it's also called so um, what I have done um, so we as black art technologies which is a technology or techno technical um, leg of um, RF shop we um, are users of CST design studio so CST is a, um, a tool that gets used to simulate and design 3d structures specifically for radiation properties so there's a lot you can do but that's not the purpose here so what i've done on the slide that you see here but it's, it's next to me on the screen is first of all just create a general plane wave now plane wave is just your radio wave just traveling if it's a higher frequency it would be um, shorter wavelength if it's lower frequencies the um, wavelength would be um, longer so the waves that you see on this thing as it is traveling would be you know, spaced differently um, with a parabola what you have and where we would have learned this in school and, and you just have a focal point so as a wave comes into a parabola it basically um, reflects into a central point it's called the focal point of a, a, a parabola or in this case a dish specifically um, as you can see on the picture there well on the picture here next to me um, you can see this definitely as the wave comes in it just reflects to a specific point now why this is useful is um, we use that in another theory we call reciprocity so I mean of course a dish receives but a dish can also transmit and it's just um, because it's a passive device it goes in or comes out so um, what I show here in a, a, a next simulation on the top view that I have on the screen uh, also next to me is there's a source it's basically the, the antenna the um, L and B if you think about the um, sky or foxtail kind of dish or so um, it sends towards the dish and then the dish creates this big aperture and that just pushes out the wave towards the um, remote destination which could be whatever you want to be it could be another dish on the other side it could be a satellite it could be a long-range um, communication but it basically works that way and then you see at the bottom there's a thing we call a 3d radiation pattern you may have seen these plots it doesn't really matter but what you could see is there's this very narrow pencil beam created the test I'm doing here, just for demonstration purposes, is 2.4 gig on quite a big dish, so it predicts to be about 26.9 dB gain, so that is a good number. So you have a dish that is about 1.2 meter diameter um, with this dish, and I mean this is not a, a highly detailed design, this is really just putting the stuff together and showing what you can get. So that is a dish. Now what you have, if you look at this thing that is next to me, it's what we call an offset reflector so you don't have a prime focus so it's not a typical parabola with a single point in the middle it's offset um, there's mechanical reasons for that because of course otherwise you have to have all these points and you have everything in front plus it creates a blockage by itself but with the offset dish like the one next to me which is um, I'll talk about it later it, it's out of the way and it's a single arm that supports everything anyway that antenna has its sacrifices it's just smaller um, uh, this antenna is smaller than 1.2 it's obviously about 60 centimeters diameter so it is significantly smaller but in this concept demonstration I get 17 dB gain which is still good it's really good because I just put a basic antenna in the um, central point um, so coming back to this thing we bought this on Gumtree, um, this kind of dish, this is an ex-Foxtel satellite dish, anything that, that we use. And what I want to do is get this dish and see if we can actually make something useful out of it for fun. 
First problem was we um, we found these dishes are always mounted towards the sky. So basically everything is made such the bracket everything is made so that this thing can point up. That is a problem because now if you want to use this dish on ground level, so basically on the horizon, we found this bracket here is actually going to clash with this pole at the bottom. Um, I've done simulations, but but you can just think by yourself. If I go to that previous picture again that I showed, um, which showed the radiation pattern going forward, if you look forward, it doesn't matter if you turn this thing upside down, it still looks forward. So what we've done, we use the antenna in an upside down setup. So in doing this, uh, can I see? Yes, you can see this. You can see there's there's no obstruction. This thing we did. Um, swap the clamp around but that's just basically removing it and putting it upside down you can tilt it any way you want to find your um, actual location um, it's not going to clash with the pole and now we can mount this on a pole um, have this supported so you'll see in the video just now that's what I've done um, so that that's how we solve the mechanical problem and going forward whenever we do a ground based test with this thing we'll just go upside down because we can so the next step in my test was just to um, think what can I test first and it's quite simple we are um, local agents for Alpha Wireless and they have nice little um, USB adapters so that was useful so I'm going to use a, um, an Alpha 036 NH as a um, USB receiver that I will plug into my laptop and instead of using an Omni antenna that comes with the antenna I'm using one of their MO4 antennas so this is a directional antenna the idea that I have is that putting this thing on this focal point we're using cable ties I mean it's 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 a bit of fun but actually if you do it properly with some real um, connections you can still make this work really well so we mount this we know the L and B the actual receiver if this was a satellite dish would come here and we mounted it so that the antenna is there facing towards the dish so that's the plan that's what we um, set out to do outside um, now in the outside test I obviously first had to build up my test to make sure that I have something that works well so um, let me show you what I've done on the outside. Okay, so the first thing that I learned here is the um, signal strength out here for my laptop as it is with the um, laptop's own connection is around minus 73 dBm. So I guess that's my reference, that's my baseline. So that's what I would expect if I'm just a typical user out here outside of my backyard. Um, it's relatively small compared to some of the bigger blocks. But um, that's what I can expect. So minus 73 is my reference. See if we can get better. So first thing first, let's put the alpha on, see what the comparison is. Well, I'd say the, um, <laughs> this part itself already is, a, is an interesting experiment. And I haven't even got to the part where I actually want to show you something yet. So I have two setups now, a laptop connected or a single strength to my house router inside and the um, alpha card independently also connected and I have two readings on my laptop. Now the two readings are actually um, phenomenal as far as um, just getting an understanding how good the alpha card is compared to a basic laptop because the laptop gives me minus 70, minus 73, it hovers um, between those values, uh, single strength. The um, alpha card uh, minus 55 to minus 60 so there's a db 10 db or more um, improvement already just by using an alpha card um, instead of just using my laptop it's not a bad laptop but i mean it is four years old so i think things would have improved um, but just that's the baseline uh, my baseline has changed significantly and is much better now but still i'm going to hunt for something better than what the alpha card by itself would do so let's keep on testing i did my third um, assembly so again my reference was a basic laptop now I added the alpha card and I replaced the antenna from the alpha card with a, um, one of the alpha M antennas. Um, so it's a directional antenna, it's still only 2.4 gig, um, which is um, good enough for, for a lot of long range um, setups. So it's a single antenna, 2.4 gig, facing towards the house. And if I didn't have the plan to show the dish, I would have almost said this is the end of the video because this is just a, an absolutely amazing um, witness of, of what, what you can do with, with these alpha cards and their own antenna. So minus 70, minus 73 with a laptop, still the same as you can see on the screen there. Um, but I add the alpha card plus the X1 antenna, it seems like we almost get about a 20 dB improvement. So 20 dB improvement with that antenna compared to my laptop by itself. That is a great baseline. That's already a, a, a massive improvement on what we get with just the laptop by itself. So um, that would certainly help for a lot of people um, this arm about, 
Um, 20 meters away from the um, access point itself, but I'm going through all the walls of my house. Everything behind me is still in the way. Um, so just in the basic setup, this almost is good enough. So if you really want to go further, let's put the dish on. To see. Okay, I've done my final test. So I put the alpha card with the um, MO4 antenna inside the actual feed of the antenna as you can see there so it's upside down because otherwise as you can see if you draw a straight line through the pole it would have had some issues i um have to admit it, it took me actually a good 15 to 20 minutes to um, find a good line because um first of all the alignment is very important higher the gain in the antenna so bigger apertures everything is bigger so it's more gain more directional which is the good thing, but the bad thing about doing that is actually that it's if you miss your target, you um, you don't see any signal at all. So I had a bit of fun games to actually get to a signal, but um, as you can see the results, I've seen minus 47 uh, RSSI. So huge, huge improvement to what the laptop by itself is, which we started off with 73, hovering around 70, 73. With the dish and everything, I managed to see minus 70, 47 dB, um, RSSI, so DBM RSSI. So I'd say if I if I say I'm happy, it'd be an under understatement. Okay, so the results were um, to be to say the least <laughs> quite astonishing. I was really happy to see what I saw. So I, my laptop was minus 73, which is not not ridiculously bad, but it was okay. Um, adding the alpha card going to minus 63 meant that I had a 10, 10 dB improvement from a laptop to the alpha card which i think is already really useful and uh, um, something good to say about this thing but um with the antenna itself um i think with the fluctuations you could see that i captured the screen at the best possible time so there was a 10 db further improvement from using an antenna to just using the, this device itself now that is not that's not expected i would expect 5 db maybe better so I think that the added um, reflections with the direction antenna might have contributed positively. I mean, obviously you would be happy with that, but you can't specifically say hand on heart, it's 10 dB and now 20 dB improvement compared to my laptop or having this with the um, actual antenna itself. But definitely something in that region, 15 to 20 dB, that, that's kind of the improvement you can expect. But the crunch was when I added this whole setup into my, um, my actual dish itself um, so there I found a 23 dB improvement compared to having a laptop by itself and then going to a external antenna I think that's enough for me to know this is something I need to spend a lot more time on um, I, I proven to myself the concept is working well um, there are a lot of things that I learned here that I want to do better um, just see how I can mount the antenna a bit better try to get a better way to um, align the antenna as I mentioned in the um, the site video <laughs> it, it took me a good 10 12 15 minutes to really get a point where I felt well actually now I'm on on this on a good signal so I need to just study my setup a bit better in that that regard um, the opportunity I think with a dish is this is to some extent frequency independent I have to be careful here because the dish or the para parabola parabolic behavior is frequency independent but how it presents gain is very frequency dependent so if it's a very low frequency if i look at 700 meg band 28 or so this would be a smaller antenna much smaller antenna than at the um, wi-fi 2.4 gig so the gain would be much less and then if you go smaller than that there comes a point where you say well it's not worth it it actually becomes um you know so that this it becomes part of the antenna not just a reflector so saying it's frequency independent is not not an absolute truth it is relative it, it's it's um within limits um but for wi-fi and and even at um uh, 4g antennas this is a, a a good antenna it's still big enough to use uh, definitely um so first step is do dual band antenna so i'm going to take the m25 this is the mo4 but i'll take the m25 from alpha do another test in a dual band setup not using this modem because this is single band only so we can see what 5.8 does and then of course 5.8 would be better on this antenna because this is for that frequency a bigger bigger aperture um, we're going to do a um, 4g test as well because we can um, it's good fun we actually have an antenna on our website that is um, capable of working on this um, we've already tested that so spoiler alert and then 
um, going into MIMO antennas. So you obviously have small MIMO Wi-Fi antennas that would fit roughly in this, this surface here. So we'll have a play to see what the uh, MIMO antenna does. So it's kind of, as I say, it's functional. You can get these secondhand anywhere. Uh, we actually found, say, supplier locally as well that um, sources them. So I will check how the response is on this video. But if there's growing um, interest, uh, we, we may just, um, you know, move into that space as well. Um, so what else is there? Oh, that's really it, I think, for now. Um, otherwise, I could keep rambling on and I don't think that that's a good idea. So thanks for watching. If you, um, if you like what we're doing, please um, consider subscribing to this channel so you could see what the, um, the, when the next videos come out. Other than that, if you have any antenna or RF related questions, feel free to visit our website rfshop.com.au or as Black, Black Art Technologies, we do design work. So um, have a look at blackarttechnologies.com. Um, give us a call, send us an email, make a comment down this video. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.